Hi, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 38. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you spending the time with me. Today I'm going to be talking about Hardanger embroidery again. So the last episode of uh, White Threads Floss Tube, I did a tutorial on Hardanger cluster blocks. And today I'm going to be doing one on the Hardanger buttonhole edge. Uh, this has come about, I had something else planned for today, but this has come about because I had a lady contact me overnight who wanted to know which of my books she could find left-handed instructions for the buttonhole edging in. She actually asked if they were in the left-handed embroiderer's companion. And unfortunately, that's a little bit too specific to Hardanger for me to include in um, a general stitch dictionary like that. So I had a think and I thought, well, in my book, Elegant Hard Airing or Embroidery, it's only got right-handed instructions because back then I wasn't doing left-handed instructions as well. I hadn't made that niche in the market for myself. Um, and my book, El uh, Early Style Hard Anger, while it's got both left and right handed instructions in it, it doesn't have the buttonhole edging because they didn't traditionally use it. And that book's about traditional embroidery, uh, sorry, traditional hardanger embroidery. So it doesn't actually have it in it. So I thought, hmm, that means there's actually a gap in my instructions for left handers. And that's a fairly basic stitch for a lot of hardanger embroiderers and so I thought well I'd better rectify that. So today I will be showing how to do the hardanger buttonhole edge specifically um, stitched by me a left-hander for left-handers but the information that I will show you will also be able to be used by right-handers. I will be stitching it in a hoop. I find that preparing my embroidery for camera it's just much easier to get it in the right place if it's sitting static in a hoop. Now I wouldn't actually stitch my hardanger in a hoop normally if it was for myself. I would have it in hand and I would be using a scooping motion. So I've got some fabric here, it's just any old fabric and I've got any old needle here and I would be scooping like that. So I would generally either insert my needle away from me like that, I hope you can see that, or from my left to right like that and I would continue to turn my fabric around and around to get to the pieces of what to the parts of the pattern that I need to get to and still be able to insert my needle in that comfortable way. As a right hander you would most likely be doing it like this or like this though I know some people go towards them as well so you can do that too fine no problem but the idea is that you would generally be making that sort of um, movement and you would turn your fabric so that would suit you to do that if you're doing it in a hoop I don't but if you are and some people do then you can follow my instructions exactly as I have them on the video and they should make sense to you so I hope this is helpful I'm going to show four different styles of corners um, these are the ones that I could think of that I have seen on people's charts and patterns before. Uh, so I will go through each one of them for you and hopefully one of them will match up with what is on your project that you're needing some assistance with and that will get you going on your way again. One of the things that I realized I should have added is that um, working as a left-hander compared to a right-hander, we're not going to be flipping. Um, so... Uh, I've talked about this before it is a bugbear of mine please right handers do not tell left handers to automatically mirror what you are doing because of thread twist and it makes things work differently so I mean you can it will still work but it won't look the same so as a left hander compared to a right hander you will turn your work either 90 degrees or 180 degrees compared to what a right hander would and right handers compared to a left hander you will not be flipping you will be turning either 90 degrees or 180 degrees so that is why these instructions can be used for both left handers and right handers because you will all be traveling in the same direction in my video I will be showing you that you will be going in an anti-clockwise direction and that's the way it works best for the thread twist of the fabric if you want to learn more about thread twist I have several videos um, I will put a link to the first one here and then you can continue on for the next ones so because of thread twist we will all be working around in an anti-clockwise direction which for you you would be working in an anti-clockwise direction um, and it means that we will all be going the same way so therefore there's no flipping 
Okay, nam, right. I have my length of thread here and I am going to start here and work down and around in that direction. So to not have to worry about my tail, I'm going to insert the needle from the front. I have no knot on it, it doesn't need one and come out where I need to start, which is there. And you can see that the tail sits underneath the fabric and we will stitch over that as we go. So from here we count down one, two, three, four, four threads and then one to the left. The reason why this is, is we are not stitching satin stitch, we are sitting, stitching a buttonhole stitch and so when we make our stitch we have to take the thread around the needle like that and pull it through and to tighten my stitch so that it's a nice tension I pull across the surface of the fabric like that. So we now insert our needle one thread to the left again and bring it out one thread to the left at the top end as well coming out through the loop so that you're catching that in place. Again, one thread to the left. Now, if these bits up here get in the way, you can flip them back out of the way and that can help you to very clearly see where you were last time and where you need to come out this time. So thread around the needle again and pull through. And you can see that each time I do that, I'm pulling up so that I can see that they sit nicely next to each other with good tension. So we are working as we did with the cluster blocks over a four by four thread block. We have now covered one, two, three, four threads in that direction and we've gone four in that direction as well. We would normally have five stitches but we've missed this one at the beginning here. We will put that in at the end. So don't worry, it will get put in, it's just not getting put in next. So we've come to the end of our first group of five stitches and now we're going to work our corner here and it as well will be over four by four threads. So we go into the corner again. Now this corner that I'm stitching will be corner A and it has uh, a stitch basically in every single hole that you can possibly get them in which means that it's quite full and quite crowded but some people show this so that is why I'm also doing it. So you can see that I'm flipping that out of the way so that I can see very clearly which the next hole is that I need to go into. Okay so back into the corner again and out one thread more. So we have now passed three I think of those threads that we need to Yes, we've done three. This will be our fourth and this will be the corner stitch. So it comes out to the corner like that. Now I don't actually like this method because I think it gets too crowded. So we've done the corner one, so now instead of coming out next to it, we're going into the hole below. And you're starting to see that my corner over here is really, really filling up and it's quite difficult to fit everything in there. It means that you've got too many stitches on the outside, you've got too many stitches on the inside corner as well and I just don't really like it. So if this is what's shown on your pattern I would actually substitute one of the other corners for this because it is not my preferred option. And just because that's what the designer has said doesn't mean that's what you have to slavishly follow unless there's a particular reason and I don't know what that would be. Okay, so that, <coughs> excuse me, is our corner and you can see that it goes to the corner and then comes down here, there is a stitch in every single hole. It's very full. Now the last stitch of our corner becomes the first stitch of our new side. So this was a previous hole we used, so we are now going to step down into the hole below and insert our needle and then bring out, so I flip that back so I can see where I was and that's the hole I was in before, this is the hole that I need to be in now. 
Okay, because there are so many stitches in here, this stitch here is sitting out further than the next one. It's in the same line of holes, but it's just because it's got all the other ones to sit on top of and it's just, it's pushed over because that is where it has to sit because there's no room for it any closer in. Um, that is one of the problems with this, that corner and one of the reasons why I don't like it. Um, also, when if you do pull them even tighter so that it sits down, you end up often getting quite a hole in that corner there and it can look like an eyelet. I don't want an eyelet right there. So um, yeah, that's another reason why I avoid it. This is our fourth stitch of the side. And this will be our fifth. And so each time we are just stepping down one uh, thread each time. Okay, so that's the fifth one and now we need to pivot on this corner here and start going out this way. You can see that as I've been stitching I've been including this thread on the back in as I go. So where we go from here is that's the last hole we came out of there. So we go one, two, three, four down from there and insert our needle and then we come out through that same hole again. Okay, so that's the first one. Now we go out to the left from here. That's our second one. And our third. Every time I'm doing this I'm checking that I've still only got four threads between the beginning and the end of the stitch so that I know I'm not getting out of place and out of kilter. It's really easy to do when you're doing the buttonhole edging because there are so many stitches that you have to cram in that you can get out of place really easily. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our five. That's the first stitch of the corner as well. So we will continue from there to, this is going to be corner B. So I go into, I've gone into the same corner again and I'm going to come out of the hole one thread left of where I just came out previously. Okay, back into the corner hole again, and this time, and it's really much and very much easier to see and very helpful if you fold that out of the way when you're doing this. One thread, two threads to the left. Okay, and tighten that. And then this time we go one thread to the left and one thread down. And that's where we bring it out this time. So this starts the next side. From here, we count two threads down and bring the needle out. And then back into the corner again and one thread down from there. So that is corner B and that completes that and starts the next side of stitching. So we insert our needle one thread below, bring it out one thread below. And keep going down till we have five parallel stitches. And you can see that I'm being quite careful with my tension. I want to pull it so that the tension is even throughout so that none of these stitches sit any further out than any of the others. Um, that one there does a little bit. This one def definitely does but that's because it's basically two stitches on top of one another and there's nothing much you can very much do about that. If I pull too tight I will start getting it too narrow from here and it will pull away from these threads here and leave too much of a gap. So we don't want to pull too tight either. We don't want it to be too loose and we don't want it to be too tight. It's got to be just right. Okay, so that's the end of that side and we are ready to start our next corner. For this one we jump down two threads and bring the needle out. Um, I'm going to stop including the tail in the, core, uh, in the underside now and I'll just trim that off later. 
From where we were last time, we go down one and across one and bring the needle out and down one and across one again. So this one's quite a rounded corner compared to some of the others. And from here we go across to, to the right and bring it out. I think the hardest thing about this is getting all your stitches in the right place but also getting your tension right as well. So that completes our corner and now we're moving on to doing the next straight section. So we are moving uh, towards the right by one thread each time. This is our fourth stitch along this side. And that is our fifth. Okay, so now we pivot on this corner and we start going down here. So I'll flick that out of the way so that we can see where we were. We count one, two, three, four threads across bring that back down and then come out through that again so we're catching our thread. So that's the first one of the new side and we do it again. So just keep moving down by one thread each time. This will be our fifth stitch here. Now as I'm going, I'm checking that these line up with the bits opposite each other. So that's lining up with that. This is lining up with this. So this is giving me indications that I haven't made any counting mistakes yet. So this will be our corner D. And for this one, pull that back out of the way so that you can see. And then count down two threads. Take the needle through the loop. Sorry, that doesn't want to sit nicely. You are the boss of the thread. You tell it where it, well, you want it to sit and you put it there. So, sorry, I didn't say what I did then. I counted down two threads again and take the needle through the loop. So that brings us to the corner. And then from there, count two threads to the left. Oh, I think I've got a knot. I do. Let me just stop this and I'll sort that out. The knot has gone, so I can continue. So pull that through. Back into the corner there again, the inside corner, and count two to the right again, and take that through. So that is our fourth corner. So they are our four variations. This one is full. This one has the corner cut off slightly. This one has the corner cut off a bit more. And this is the same as that one, but it's got half the number of stitches, which means it looks pretty much the same, but it all fits so much better. Um, so if you ever come across this, I would substitute it for this one if you want the same pointed corner effect, whereas these are a bit more rounded. Okay, so from here, I'm just going to... Um, go around the rest. I haven't got any more variations of corners to show you so I just want to do the rest as quickly as I can so that I can get back to the beginning to show you how to join the end to the beginning. And if I come across the fact, like if I run out of thread then I'll be able to show you that as well. Okay, you'll notice that I've got hardly any thread left. 
And so uh, now that I'm just about to reach a corner, it's a great time to change over my thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert that and leave it sitting loose. And then I'm going to get myself a new thread. So I've turned over to the back. This was our tail from the beginning, we'll get rid of that later. And this is the tail of the old thread that we've just finished working with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run my needle through the back of about the equivalent of about four or five cluster blocks. Now if I just pull that, uh, take that through, it'll come out really easily. So what I'm going to do is I've come out on that side of that stitch, I'm going to go under that side of the other side of the stitch and take it through. So I've essentially done a tiny little back stitch there. You really don't see that at all, but that will mean that as soon as I put some tension on this thread, it won't just pull straight out. We've all done that before, haven't we? So um, I'll keep just running that through the back there, making sure I don't get the other tail caught up in it, which I very skillfully did. Okay. So now I will turn back over to the front. I've turned back over to the front and with my new thread I'm going to come out in the next hole that I would need to. So I went in through this hole here so I need to come out four threads across from that. This will complete that stitch of the previous thread and start the new thread. So you can see how I have intertwined them and um, there is no uh, reason to take a little stitch over the end and start your new thread. You can just have a seamless join like this. So this thread here on the back now I have to work that in as I go. Otherwise what I could do, and I probably will do that because it's just going to be easier, is I'm going to re-thread it into the needle which is what I'm doing off camera and I'm go just going to park it over at the side here and that means it's out of the way but I can continue on with it uh, with the new thread with it without the old thread getting in um, caught up in the back of the stitching and then later at the end I will finish that one off. So for our corner I will keep going and I'll speed this up again and then I'll show you the ending. So you could see in that little sequence that even I make mistakes at times. Yes, it certainly happens. But because I am constantly checking, am I in the right place? Have I, is the beginning of that stitch in the right place? Is the end of that stitch in the right place? I picked up that I had made a mistake and was able to undo it before I got too far. Um, and that's what you should be doing too. Check yourself all the time so that you know that you're not making a mistake and you're not getting halfway around the other side of the piece and then finding the mistake because that can be devastating. Okay, so that is my last stitch um, of the corner. I just need to join the end to the beginning now. So some people, the way they do it is to just take their last stitch and then take the thread down to the back and anchor it so just like that. I don't do it that way. 
So I'll undo that last stitch there. What I prefer is to, like my joins in threads, have a seamless join from the end to the beginning. So this was our beginning stitch here. We had just a little, if you think of it like an arm, this is the, um, the elbow here. We had the bit of the arm coming out at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is insert it under that bit of the beginning of the arm and in towards the elbow. So I'm inserting from the outside in underneath that first bit of stitch that was sitting there and then I am going to take it back to the corner like that. And so that was the first stitch that we missed at the beginning, we've put it in at the end. Okay, that is now complete. I will turn that over and finish off all those ends and it will be complete. Now, if I was doing this for myself, I would have taken probably a lot more care. There are some stitches that are sitting out of place. You can still manipulate them a little bit at this stage. If you see one that's sitting up, see this one sitting out a bit further than the one next to it, I can pull some of that back into a previous one and you can just adjust them. You are the boss of the thread. You can put the thread where you want it to be. So don't be afraid to manipulate it. Um, if you have one that's sitting out a long way further, that one's quite a bit further out and the next one's in quite small, then just remember that you can jiggle it around play with the tension of the stitches on either side and see if you can get it to sit a lot better. So I do that sort of thing and I do this sort of thing all the time. So, you know, if I do it, you can too. Um, don't accept that the fact that that's the way it is when you start it out is the way it's going to finish. You can keep on improving. And even if you've already finished that stitching, you can just go and have a little bit of a fiddle with it and make it look a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to turn over to the back and finish off those threads now. So rather than just assuming you know how to do this, I've turned it over. I have cut a couple off already, but um, this is one of the threads that we needed to finish off. So I'm just going to run it, whoops, already unthreaded it, through the back of about four or five cluster blocks. We haven't got cluster blocks here, we've got buttonhole stitch, but about the same distance. Um, and that will hold just fine so you won't need to do anything more to it. I'm not using a little back stitch at this stage because the reason for the back stitch is to um, provide something to stop it just from pulling straight out when you then put tension on the thread and continue using it. I'm not continuing to use this, it's just um, I'm going to go this way, it's just going to be in the back and never move again so I don't need to worry about doing back stitches. If I have extra back stitches they'll just create extra lumps and I don't want lumps so therefore I'm not going to use them. Okay so that's both of them finished off. I'm going to take it out of the hoop now and I'm hopefully going to be able to show you how to cut it out. Now I am notoriously bad at keeping things in view when it's not in a hoop. I move it all around and it ends up not being where you can see it or it's too high or something. So this will hopefully work. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I've zoomed out a bit as well. I have my Dovo Hardanger scissors here which have a very, very fine tip, um, very sharp as well. They are also, you can see at the end there, there's a bit taken away to slim it down that way as well which means you can get in behind the fabric threads, between the fabric threads, much better even. What I want to do is I want to have, rather than cutting here, I want to cut over here. I want to have it so that my scissors are on the left of my satin stitching. And the reason why that is, is because this, this bottom one here, if I have it over this side, it pushes me further away um, than if I have it over here on this side, this is on top and it's not going to get in the way. So I'm going to insert my scissors underneath those threads there and then I'm going to go under a few and bring it back to the front. And the reason why I bring it back to the front is because then I know that I'm not going to accidentally cut too far. So I'll cut those two and then you can see also that I am wiggling my scissors around. I don't want any of those stitches on the front because on the front we've got the buttonhole edge that sits out further. I don't want any of that to get caught on my scissor blade. So I'm giving it a wiggle to make sure it's not caught. You can see that I brought the tip of the scissors back to the front and I'm going to gently and, and 
very, uh, what would be the word, um, determinedly cut through them. So you need to remember when you're doing this, don't forget to breathe. Uh, so again, I have my scissors on the left and my stitching on the right, and that gets me in closer. And I'm going to bring my scissor point back to the front as I'm doing this so that I don't actually accidentally cut too far. And then I will snip them. And so it's just a matter of going around and making sure that you don't have any of the thread caught uh, between the blades of the scissors. Just go gently. You don't need to do a whole heap at once. You can do it thread by thread if you want. That takes forever in my opinion, but some people like to. And just gently go around. Hopefully this is staying in uh, focus for you so that you can see what's going on. It'd be rather annoying if it hadn't. Um, you can also see that I have not always been returning my scissor point to the front, but when I get to this point here, I am definitely going to bring my scissor point back to the front because I do not want to accidentally cut too far. So give it a good wiggle and keep going around. On the back you can also see the difference between these curved corners that is the one that I usually use and the very pointed ones, those ones there. Um, they look quite different. If you are ever unsure of whether you've put your stitch in the right place, if you turn over to the back, you won't have that rolled edge of the buttonhole obscuring your view of where the thread actually goes through the fabric. And on the back, you can see a lot better where your stitch is sitting. So if you're ever confused about where it is and where it should be, turn over to the back and that might help you sort it out. This one's a very long straight section, so I've gone all the way down there, brought my scissor point back to the front and will cut all of them in one go. If I had fatter scissors, I wouldn't be able to do that, but because my scissors are very fine, I can fit it between that many threads and still get it back to the front. Um, when I'm putting my scissors in, I'm bringing it over the edge of that rolled edge so that I'm not cutting that accidentally. You will get the feel of this. Hopefully you won't make too many mistakes along the way and cut too many threads that you weren't intending to. And just keep going all the way around. And you'll see that I am remaining with my scissors on the left and the stitching on the right because it gets me in that just little bit closer to where I want to cut. And these are the last few threads. Come on, go through, cut, cut, cut. Nope, one more. There we are, we have our totally useless little sample. Uh, and that shows you the four different corners and then also how to change over threads, how to finish off your thread so that it's a seamless join from the end to the beginning, and then how to cut it out. So hopefully that all made sense to you and that um, has solved any problems that you may have been having with the buttonhole edging. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me and ask me, as you can see, if I have the time, I am quite responsive to these things and I will help you where I can. Uh, the ways to get in contact with me, you can comment below um, on YouTube where there is the comment section. You can comment on Facebook. Please don't send me Facebook messages though because quite often they don't get to me um, or I find them quite late compared to when you sent them. Um, it's just the way Facebook works and Messenger. I find it a bit clunky sometimes. Um, you can also comment on Instagram on the post there. You can email me. My email address is found on my website under the contact part. So there are all the ways you can contact me. Uh, I think that's all I have to say today. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. <music>